Welcome back to the Making Strides podcast. This is episode three. On this episode, we showcase how different strategies for managing running-related injuries can mean the difference between prolonged recovery or a timely return to running and stronger than ever. I'm going to be interviewing Adam regarding an Achilles injury he had almost a decade ago. Adam reflects on how poorly his injury was managed and the major effects it had on his training. We then discuss what would have been a more ideal approach to his rehab had he known everything he knows now. We hope you enjoy. Welcome to Making Strides, a podcast aimed at empowering and educating runners. Our goal is to help decipher misinformation in the running world that can lead runners off their path to progress. With an evidence-guided approach, this podcast aims to give runners the resources they need to foster healthy, lifelong running from track to trail. I'm AJ Cohen. And I'm Adam Schwert. Let's Let's make make some some strides. Hey guys, welcome back to the Making Strides podcast. This is going to be episode three. Hang in there with us from the from the technology side of things. We're really figuring things out every episode when it comes to audio quality and really setting up the meetings and all that type of stuff. So um, we're expecting the quality to improve with every every episode that we do. And um, there is a little bit of a learning curve and we're learning. So we'll just um, keep on rolling here. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about some injuries that we've had in the past that we maybe just didn't take the best approach with because we didn't know everything that we know now. So I'm going to shoot this question over to Adam and we're going to go from there. But Adam, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about an injury that you've had in the past. I want you to tell us what was going on. What did you feel and what did you feel like you needed to do at the time? At the conclusion of my freshman year at Maryville University, I uh, developed some some pain on the, the portion of the Achilles tendon where it inserts into the heel bone. And which was super weird because I remember I was, it was after a week off off of training after our our conference meeting. And it was the day before we were supposed to start our summer buildup. And I was just sitting in the chair and like, my Achilles feels kind of weird. So I went ahead and trained for the next week or two and it seemed to get a little worse. So then I was like, "Eh, I guess I'm out of commission for a while because that's what I thought way back when, Um, that if you have any kind of pain, symptoms, anything, time off is the best thing for it. Long story short, I basically took off that whole summer. It just really wasn't getting better. I did some physical therapy, which is probably something to to talk about how it was approached then and how I might do it differently now. Do you have any questions so far? I know we're trying to switch up the format here a little bit. Yeah. So how long, how much time did you take off from running? It was more or less literally the whole summer and a lot of, I think the cross country season, I took a lot off. So it was, I don't know the exact time frame, and I know I tried to start running again a few times, but it was as much as six months. And like, what was the intensity of symptoms that you were feeling when you decided to stop running? They really weren't too bad. Um, I would say probably below a five. Again, this is probably 2011, so nine years ago. I mean, I don't remember all the details on all the specifics, but I also had quite a few injuries in high school, which made me like hypersensitive to stuff. Um, So anytime I felt a little bit of anything, I was kind of like a mini freak out and just like cease everything until it calms down. Mm -hmm. And when you did stop running because of your concerns about your pain and your issues with your Achilles, can you describe for me in greater detail what was your biggest concern at that time? At the time, it's probably that I would never run again or, or something completely disproportionate to what I was feeling. Because, you know, I, I assume, you know, injuries were, were the worst thing in the world. <laughs> you know, when you're, you're 19 and you've already had several injuries that took you out of quite a bit of running in high school. So, yeah. So another way to ask about concern, like what was your concern with running through that pain? Um, Like why didn't you just try and run on it a little bit more? It seems like you had some concern with that pain and that's why you completely terminated your running. Um, So tell me a little bit more about your thoughts surrounding the symptoms that you were feeling and and what was your best understanding? Let's just say before you saw that physical therapist, what was your best understanding at the time before the PT of what was kind of causing your discomfort? Yeah, so I, 
you know, I made the assumption that it was probably tendon related. I was, you know, a rather inquisitive runner, I guess, or, you know, tried to, I, I read a lot of runner's world back then and all kinds of just random stuff, just really trying to, trying to learn more. So I assumed it was a tendon and that if I ran more, it would also get worse. I thought that if I continued to train, pain would get worse and potentially something worse would happen in regards to that down the line. I didn't, I don't think I really understood what the potential consequences beyond further pain and further an extended amount of time off from continued training. Okay. And what was your, what was the point at which you decided so let's just relate it back to the, the timeline was you had an onset of pain, um, you stopped running, and then how long after that did you seek out physical therapy? I bet it was probably a few weeks to a month. Okay. And then describe for me your understanding of your injury briefly after working with the PT and what their approach kind of looked like. Yeah. Uh, and this is, I mean, this is again... 2011. So, I mean, this is nothing against them or anything like that. Um, you know, it was, it was that it was some sort of, and this is also in Missouri where there wasn't any direct access. So I'd already been to the doctor and got referred to therapy. Uh, and so after those two encounters, it was understanding that it was some sort of Achilles tendonitis um, or maybe how we define it as more of a tendinopathy somewhere along some sort of continuum uh, now. And then it was managed primarily with stretching and eccentric heel drops. Okay. What was the, was the big focus? Yeah. And did that, did that stuff help? No. Okay. Why do you think that stuff didn't help? At the time I had no idea. <laughs> Um, now I think it's largely because it was an insertional Achilles issue, in which case, as I moved the shin forward over the foot to stretch it or do the heel drops, um, on a step that is, um, I was moving into a, a position where the tendon is getting a lot of compression from the heel bone as it kind of wraps around and goes through that motion, which oftentimes sensitizes it. Uh, a position it, it doesn't like to be in. Um, so if anything, it just kept me at a, you know, at, at a baseline minimum, never really, you know, they were a good exercise, but going through that amount of motion was maybe not indicated as we would understand tendinopathies today. Yeah, cool. Just to recap real quick for non-clinician listeners. So three things in there. Um, Direct access is just basically legislation, legislation in place now that people don't need a physician or doctor's order or prescription for physical therapy anymore in most states. And um, well, pretty much. I think it's all except for Missouri still. Yeah, all states except for Missouri, which is why you don't live there anymore. No. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's great. Um, and then you, you were talking about the kind of continuum of tendon related disorders. There's a lot of misinformation that we need to get into on another episode, but long story short is, you know, whether it's a tendonitis, tendinosis, we just kind of call them tendinopathies or tendon related disorders. Now, something's going on with the tendon, um, tendinalgia or tendon related pain, right? Um, we don't really know and it doesn't really matter what's causing that kind of pain in, in, in most scenarios. But um, and then you were talking about tendon compression, which I think we should put in the show notes. Uh, Chris showed us that video on tendon compression that I also added to my website, but um, we can link that, yeah. that video for folks who are interested in tendon um, the compression uh, on tendons and how that can relate to just your tolerance to activities that involve compressive forces on tendons. So anyway, cool. So, so what eventually got you better, Adam? Like what, what happened? How did this um, resolve? So I think I got a second opinion uh, as what it was from another doctor who ordered an MRI. And this is roughly six months later now. And they, they thought it was more of a bursitis or, or maybe there, at least what I remember, maybe there was some 10 related changes um, that I, I'm just forgetting on. But the result of that was that I got a, took an oral steroid for I think it was like a steroid pack or whatever for like a week. And then it was good. 
So <laughs> I don't know if it was truly then, if it was placebo, because at the time I was, you know, pretty desperate for anything. I would have like gone for it. And, you know, if somebody convinced me enough and was sure enough in it, then, you know, I was going to walk away, you know, feeling good about it. Um, I certainly wasn't a fan of steroids, even I, I feel like for most of my athletic career, I've been pretty anti-medicine, try to be more holistic, which is part of the reason some of my injuries have prolonged as much as possible because I try to truly find the source. But, you know, that's another issue that we don't have to talk about right now. So eventually it, that took care of it, I guess. At least it took care of the symptoms, that is. Yeah, totally. So looking back now, knowing what you know now, there were a couple things that you've mentioned already. You were hinting at already being mistakes, right? So maybe doing heel drops, adding those compressive loads to the Achilles before the Achilles was ready for that type of um, that type of load, right? So there's one pitfall. What other major pitfalls maybe, what, what were the biggest mistakes that looking back now that were made? Yeah, I think really we got to start before I even had symptoms. And that winter break through that spring uh, semester, I pretty much hammered all the time. And it was my freshman year. So that's really a time you don't want to hammer if you're running collegiately because you just came, you basically in college, you have the summer off. And then depending on how far you go into the cross country season, you have November, maybe winter break or winter break, maybe November off. And that's all you have for the year. So you race cross country, you race indoor track and you race outdoor track. So there's almost nine months of the year. You're like just on the gas. And I got pretty fit after cross and I started running some runs that felt really fairly comfortable at right at seven or just under minutes per mile. And I got hooked on that as well as, you know, I was in a, I happened to be in a pretty good position. So I was handling some volume at that point. And so I was hammering the intensity and the volume, uh, trying to run all my runs at seven minutes per mile or under for an average, um, which led me to just be really, really tired come that spring semester and really burnt out. So I think that's the biggest piece right there that kind of led me to develop an Achilles issue. And then once I had it, you know, I kind of yo-yoed trying to run a little bit, take a day off, run a little bit, take a day off. Um, and that was first week or two, or really if I just kind of managed it with some, maybe not running at that time, obviously I couldn't tolerate it or running maybe with a walk run and then doing um, some strengthening based exercises that didn't put me into a compressive position. I think that would have yielded a lot better result. Yeah. So did your physical therapist talk to you a little bit about trying to find uh, the root cause from the perspective of your training habits in recent months? No. Okay. Did, did your, so, and then you just mentioned the, the heel drop exercises, right? So we know that load, right? The application of a rehabilitative load is really important for tendinopathy rehab. So like instead of the heel drops, maybe what kind of approach could, could would you have taken now? Yeah. Um, and actually let's clarify the heel drops I was doing was all body weight. Okay. So that's number one would have added a, a meaningful amount of load to stimulate some adaptation. Um, so AKA going pretty heavy, um, probably also would have done some isometrics just for, um, although my understanding now is that there's kind of some, inconclusive evidence as far as symptom modification with isometrics outside of maybe the knee, but definitely there's still attributes to isometric exercises, especially when going pretty heavy with them that result in positive qualities in the tendon, such as it being stiffer, which is one, one tissue, unlike maybe the muscles where we want stiffness like that, that is a good thing. So really going heavier, um, maybe adding in some isometrics and avoiding the compressive forces yeah. Probably the big things I would, would change now. Yeah. You know, I think this warrants a little bit of clarification again, because um, from an outsider's perspective, you had heel drops at body weight 
that maybe weren't very well tolerated back the, your first attempt at rehabbing things with your initial PT. And now you're saying you would have added a lot of weight to your heel raise exercise, whatever you want to call it, or your isometrics. Now, just to clarify, you would be doing that in a position where there is less compressive forces through the Achilles tendon. You wouldn't be dropping the heel below parallel yet, quite yet until you're able to tolerate that type of, that type of position, right? So you would yes. then be able to add more weight to your heel raise or whatever you want to call it, heel drop exercise, calf raise, heel raise, whatever you want to call it. I call it just a heel raise. So your heel raise exercise, you'd be adding a lot more weight maybe just doing it from a flat ground or even in a, from a position where your heel is already raised, right? So maybe you have a shoe that has eight or 10 millimeters of drop, you, a yeah. running shoe. You could just do it in your running shoe and you're already in a little bit of that heel, heel slightly raised position. Isometrics are another good, good place to start at least for a lot of folks. Isometrics, in, from my experience, are usually the most tolerated type of contraction for, for folks who have like an irritable tendinopathy. Right. So um, plus the benefits you talked about. Right. So, yeah, I just wanted to clarify that because it kind of sounded like, you know, once again, for our non-clinician listeners, if you were with body weight having issues with the heel drop exercise, now you're talking about adding lots of load. Why is that OK? Well, it's OK for because we're not adding those compressive loads in the, in the same way that as, as you were before. So the tendon's not getting as irritated potentially. And then also we need that load in order to stimulate mechanical changes and have this collagen synthesis process in the, in the heel or in, in the, in the Achilles. Right. Yeah. And especially even, you know, after getting the MRI and we saw that maybe it was more of a bursitis issue, definitely don't want the compressive forces then that's really going to keep things irritated. Yeah. Cool. So I think, I mean, I think that covers a lot of it really, really well. I mean, you, you had talked about doing some stretching too with the, your initial bout of physical therapy. What are your thoughts on that now? I really don't, don't care for it too much uh, globally, especially with tendinopathies. Um, you know, it seems like you know, that, that's a big piece and that people like to add in. And, you know, if it's more of a mid portion, you know, and if you like doing it, that's okay. But I think it's more of those insertional ones that are near the bone that are more at risk for getting into those compressive positions, that it's more of a bigger issue. Yep. It, there's more important things to deal with than trying to gain mobility and stretching and all of that stuff. Yeah, totally. You know, there are some situations I think where people can feel like stretching makes them feel better for a short period of time. But in your scenario, it just so happened that the position of stretching the Achilles and the calf was further compressing and irritating your tendon. And so stretching for you was likely detrimental. Yeah, because it wasn't even a case where, okay, I did my heel drops and the stretches and it hurt worse, you know, maybe initially, but it was more of the fact that it just wasn't helping. Yeah. It wasn't getting any better. Totally. Cool. I, I think your situation actually turned out to be a really good one to talk about. So uh, we can just, we can do me at another time. Um, so uh, what, what are your thoughts now on how long you took off a of running and how might you change that a little bit if you were to have the same injury now? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't take off as much time. I mean, we know that tissues adapt to stress and if you don't have that stress, then it adapts in the opposite manner. Um, so it definitely wasn't, you know, looking upstream, you know, into the, the, the knee, the hip, and all the musculature around those joints definitely wasn't great for giving me a good prognosis on my return to run. It would just have to start from a lower and lo the longer time I took off, the lower the starting point has to be for everything else around it. Totally. Yeah. I think honestly, I tell folks too, they come into the clinic and they're like, I haven't run in this many weeks. And, and I usually tell them, look, priority number one is to get you back to some form of, of running related movement that's tolerable for you within your given situation. Like we know that the body's really good at adapting. Like you said, the body will adapt to stress, but the body adapts to lack of stress as well. So it will de-adapt and get weaker. And we're not just concerned with your Achilles here, right? Your, your injured tissue. These are all of your running related tissues that, you know, all of these tissues that you've adapted over time throughout your running and training are now all of them 
are, are, are to the detriment of your rest. Um, and they're all de-adapting. So yeah, I think that's a really important concept to make sure that people understand, you know, Chris Johnson, one of our mentor, basically, he, he says, stress the tissue with the issue, right? For multiple reasons, we need to have that graded exposure back to the activity we want to tolerate, but also there's a psychological component too, right? Like if we associate a certain activity with pain and therefore we avoid or fear that activity, we could develop an avoidance, whether it's conscious or subconscious, that we can develop an avoidance of that activity or an association with that activity and having discomfort or pain, right? So I think that's a huge kind of concepts to to go over like getting back to running or something close to running is really important and priority number one so like what would you do now adam if you were like how would you approach that yeah i would i mean at a bare minimum at least you know doing something a couple times a week you know even if it's one minute on nine minutes of walking or something just a little bit of exposure to that impact to that stretch shortened cycle um, or okay, like, like that plyometric type of activity, just to engender some sort of tolerance to that once I was ready to truly progress back into it. Cool. And ideally, all the exercises that I would do instead of what I was doing then should help me tolerate that better. Yeah, totally, for sure. And I think it's a combination. We need to always be assessing the amount of load that you're able to tolerate at a given time. When you're injured, it's not a ton. And we want to increase your capacity over time, right? So we use this, you've told me you use this analogy as well, but I use the analogy of the, of the glass of water, right? So you want to fill that glass of water with everything that you need that, that tendon to, to be able to resist in terms of different types of stressors, right? So running, we want to dose running strategically. We want to dose your strength training or rehabilitative strength training loads to that tendon, right? For the benefit of, of increasing the tendon stiffness and, and collagen synthesis and all that type of stuff. Um, and so each of these, each of these components takes up another volume, you know, amount of volume of that glass. And ultimately we need to strategize that because overflow of water out of this glass means an exceeding of that tissue's capacity. If we do too much, then we have, you know, some issues or, uh, you know, some increase in symptoms or whatever, right? So it's a constant managing of all of that, but all of it's really important, right? And maybe you have a job where you're on your feet all day. And so you have to factor that in there. Yeah. So any other thoughts surrounding any of that? Um, yeah. I mean, that that is one model to help explain pain. And I think in the running population athletes, it, it works a lot of the time. Uh, and it also to include in there is kind of your emotional status, you know, sleep, nutrition. I mean, literally everything that makes up the world around you is in that cup, so to speak. But there are people, you know, it doesn't work with. Some of my teammates doing the exact same stuff that I was doing leading up to my symptoms didn't develop anything or maybe had more stressors going on and, you know, walked away just fine. So it, it's not a perfect model, but it's, it's one, you know, not having the perfect model, you know, highlights the importance of seeking out a professional that can look at things in a through a bigger lens than just what you have going on and what somebody else did and it worked for them so now you're going to do that so going back touching on episode two of of, you know some of the pitfalls of social media and talking to your buddies that may be a good place to start get different ideas but ultimately it may not help in the long term may not find your answer totally yeah, I've had an Achilles tendinopathy before. I took a lot of time off and it didn't help. Also never introduced any sort of graded exposure to increasing loads. And for like years after the Achilles issue, I was scared that I was going to re-injure it and it just always felt a little tweaky. <laughs> yeah, I totally would have gone back and had a more structured graded exposure approach to running. I would have had um, some, some strength training involved there for sure, some progressive loading to the Achilles. I remember doing a ton of stretching, which we talked about may not be the best situation. Mine was more mid portion, so I could get away with more stretching, but um, mid portion of the Achilles as opposed to that where it attaches to the heel. Yeah, and I remember that I did go to see a PT at the time too, and she just literally dry needled the crap out of my calf and my Achilles, and I couldn't run normally for like five days after that because of how painful that was. So I don't think that really helped. And then she also just, the only other exercise, she, sh- she didn't even show me an exercise to strengthen my Achilles. She showed me exercises for, 
for just like lunges, which, which could be fine in a different situation or for a different reason, a different narrative. But like, I was just doing lunges instead of really addressing my Achilles. So I, yeah. yeah. So that's similar situation. I, I would also add on that, or I guess not really add on to you, but to, to my previous thoughts on how would I would pro- approach running and returning to it, you know, making sure I stay on flat ground and doing a walk run. Cause at the time I was like, okay, you know, we're good. We're going to try running. So we go out and we run like a mile or two. So we're running, you know, five plus minutes of consecutive running before we've shown tolerance to just two minutes of running. And then, you know, I just go out and run, uh, you know, and if we start going uphill, we start shifting loads more towards the foot and ankle, putting some stress in the Achilles. So, you know, there, there are a lot of variables to, to consider. Yeah, totally. Another reason why seeing a, a running specialist, rehab professional who can really cater to your situation is important, right? Because you can look at somebody who's having Achilles issues and you could see that maybe they run in a zero drop shoe. Maybe they do a lot of uh, vertical ascent on their, like they run a lot of hills. Um, then maybe they also do quite a bit of speed work. And, you know, and maybe all of these factors combined, you can not permanently, but temporarily tweak with, you know, some of these aspects and get somebody to better tolerate running almost immediately. You know, you could have a pretty quick effect on somebody's tolerance towards running, get somebody back to um, a, a healthy training load in a really reasonable amount of time because, you know, we can really change those things pretty quickly. So do you have any other thoughts for today, Adam? I don't think so. Cool. Um, We're going to skip you. I mean, I feel like that, that was, we covered a lot of ground. Yeah, I think, I think this is as long as we can probably have this episode be, but, um, and I do think that uh, I should, I should take a little bit more time to think about a good situation to talk about um, for me, because I'm still trying to figure out, I think that yours was a really good situation, really good um, place story to learn some lessons and, and really compare and contrast your approach then and what you know now. And, um, and also it just happens this, this episode turned out to be, probably going to be a good resource for any of our listeners who have or are struggling with some Achilles issues. So yeah, hundred percent. Cool. Well, uh, we'll, we'll put the link to that tendon compression, uh, educational video in the, in the show notes. And we'll also link our Facebook and Instagram pages and websites and stuff like that. Like we have been. And other than that, do you want to say anything, Adam, to go? Just as always, you know, if anybody wants to reach out or connect with me, uh, Instagram, Facebook, at Run Mental, uh, websites, runmental.com. Uh, and there's a contact page on there as well as my emails on the Facebook and Instagram. So whatever is easiest for you. Yep. Same here. Um, up and running PT, up and running PT.com. And yeah, so we hope to catch you next time. Go out and make some strides. Yeah. See you guys.